Good morning. I would like to welcome you to the regular public meeting of the Henry County Board of Commissioners for 9 a.m. Monday, September 19, 2011. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order and ask for an acceptance of the agenda. Motion by Mr. Holmes. Second by Mr. Allada. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. At this time, I would like to read a proclamation, and this is uh, proclaiming National Fire Prevention Week in Henry County. <clears throat> Whereas fire is a serious public safety concern both locally and nationally, and homes are where people are at greatest risk from fire, and whereas fire departments in the United States responded to more than 360,000 home fires in 2009, which killed more than 2,500 people, and 83 were killed by home fires in Georgia in 2010, and whereas cooking, heating, and electrical equipment are the leading causes of home structure fires and associated injuries, and cooking equipment is the third leading cause of home fire deaths, and whereas home candle fires are reported to a U.S. Fire Department every 30 minutes on average, and whereas the risk of dying in a home structure fire caused by smoking material rises with age, and whereas working smoke alarms cut the risk of dying in reported home fires in half while automatic fire sprinkler systems cut the risk of dying in a home uh, fire by 80 percent, and whereas residents who have planned and practiced a home fire escape plan are more prepared and will therefore be more likely to survive a fire, and whereas the Henry County Fire Department is committed to ensuring the safety and security of all those living in and visiting our community while also reducing the occurrence of home fires and home fire injuries through prevention and protection education. And whereas the 2011 Fire Prevention Week theme, it's Fire Prevention Week, Protect Your Family from Fire, effectively serves to remind us all of the simple actions we can take to keep our homes and families safe from fire during Fire Prevention Week and year-round. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Henry County Board of Commissioners that the week of October 9th through 15th, 2011, shall be known as Fire Prevention Week throughout the county, during which time all the citizens of Henry County are urged to protect their homes and families by heeding the important safety messages of Fire Prevention Week 2011 and to support the many public safety activities and efforts of the Henry County Fire and Emergency Services this 19th day of September 2011 by the Henry County Board of Commissioners. Um, is someone from the Fire Department, Chief Lacey, did you want to come and make some comments before we present the proclamation to you and your group? Good morning. Um, thank you again for your continued support of the fire department and our mission. I think that you can hear from, from what you read this morning in the proclamation that our uh, prevention efforts throughout the county continue to be uh, extensive uh, regardless of, of all the other work that we have to do, and we thank you for your support in helping us protect our citizens. Well, thank you so much for all that you do in the community, all the educational classes, the Citizens Fire Academy, all that you do to help spread the word of, of how you can keep your family safe. We certainly appreciate your efforts on that. Thank you. And we'd like to present you with a proclamation.
be left. The next item on the agenda is under SPLOS. We have a resolution requesting approval of a deed of conveyance and easement regarding the new Haven House. Our presenter is Ron Burkhalter, Capital Projects Director, Exhibit Number 1. Good morning. Chairman, Commissioners, good morning. Part of the construction for the Haven House was the installation of 1,123 feet of 8-inch diameter sanitary sewer, including six manholes, a fire line including a vault and meter, this resolution is to approve a deed of conveyance, an easement for commercial fire line meter, easement for the sewer, and the contribution of fixed assets, limited warranty, and the owner's affidavit between Henry County and the Henry County Water and Sewer Authority for the Haven House. The amount of the fixed assets for the sewer line materials is $47,571. The amount of fixed assets for the Compact fire line is $37,760, and the appraisal for the approximately 0.61 acres of land is $23,625. Attached to the resolution is the appraisal for a total of $108,956. If anybody has any questions. Um, Mr. County Manager, just a quick question. I know that the reason that we needed the, um, the exact amount of the value associated with this conveyance is because we do exchange services with the Water and Sewer Authority. How do we account for that? Is there a separate uh, spreadsheet that, you, that we, the county, keep in order to um, not, I guess, lose track of some of these assets? We'll, we'll send a letter to the, uh, to the Water Authority. And uh, uh, I think Mike and Terry do a pretty good job of keeping up with that. Uh, I've started some uh, fairly regular meetings with Mr. Farmer where we discuss issues like this, and uh, um, it definitely is a, uh, is a help to open those lines of communication. Thank you. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? Mr. Holder? Just, just a comment, and of course I asked for this to be done. And it's important that, that, the, that the accounting be done and that the, the, the money goes to the proper and appropriate accounts so that they can be tracked. And I think that's the question that, that everybody has is uh, rather than one agency cutting another agency a check, the, the exchange of services is, is to keep it ongoing. I know there are issues where we pave roads and the Water Authority does other things and various other Governmental agencies do too, so there has to be an exchange of services. So the key to it, though, is the, is the proper accounting that, that uh, well, each agency knows where they stand. Any other questions or comments? If not, you have before you a resolution approving a deed of conveyance, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion, motion by Mr. Holder, second, second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to public safety, the first item is a resolution requesting approval of a memorandum of agreement with the Georgia Department of Public Safety. Our presenter is Don Ash, Director of Emergency Communications, Exhibit Number 2. Good morning. Good morning. This is a recurring agreement where we provide some lease space to the Department of Public Safety to put some fixed um, radio equipment at our tower site located at Station 1 at 664 Industrial Boulevard. Does any board member have a question or comment? This, this is the one on Old Jackson, not Industrial. We got two. Yes, this was Old Jackson, 1201 oh, Old Jackson. I'm sorry. Yeah. I had them in reverse order. Exactly. This is actually the one from Old Jackson Road, uh, agreement between Henry County and U.S. Um, for the Public Safety Department for fixed radio equipment at that site. Does any board member have a question pertaining to this item? If not, you have before you a resolution approving the memorandum of agreement for 1201 Old Jackson Road. And I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. The next item is a similar resolution, and that's going to be exhibit number three, and this is with the Georgia Forestry Commission. Correctly. Um, this is actually the one located at 664 Industrial Boulevard. It provides um, Georgia Forestry with a amplified site for their um, transmitting and receiving um, public safety radio signals. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? 
If not, you have before you a resolution approving the memorandum of understanding with the Georgia Forestry Commission. I'll entertain a motion. Move to motion by Mr. Staney, second by Mr. Holder. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. And the final item is a resolution requesting approval to renew the Harris software agreement, and that's going to be exhibit number four. Thank you. Um, the software agreement is the agreement that provides all updates and needed changes to our software that manages our 800 public safety radio system, and it's with the Harris Corporation, and it's for $69,000. Does any board member have a question pertaining to this item? Mr. Stamey? This is a single source here. This is what we do. That with is correct. correct. Um, Harris is the radio system provider, and the software is designed specifically for that system, and no outside vendor provides that as software. Package. Is there anybody that's, that's, in, that's in the future that's come along that will be a competitor to these people as far as um, software? Let me explain. Basically, right now we have two major um, public safety radio systems, and both systems being Motorola or Harris. Um, software is designed specifically for the operational of that system. I don't foresee that changing um, at this time. But one of the things we look forward to is APCO 25, Project 25, those projects come available. Um, it changes the system where radio systems are just not designed by specific vendors, but it's an open playing field that we may be able to buy um, different software as well as equipment to operate on that system. Okay, thank you, Tom. Are yes. there any other questions, Mr. Aletta? Um, the uh, sixty-nine thousand dollars. How does that compare to prior years' uh, agreements? It's pretty consistent with it. Um, I yeah. think it may be a slight increase, but it's just a renewing agreement for our software licensing. That includes all the upgrades you had indicated. Is that correct? Absolutely. Um, it provides all our upgrades for our software. Okay. All right. Thank you. Are there any other questions? If not, you have before you a resolution that is approving the renewal of the contract with Harris Software FX agreement in the amount of $69,000, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Moving on to planning and zoning services, we have a resolution requesting award of a bid for landscaping services for the I-75 at Highway, 80, Highway 2081 interchange. Our presenter is Michael Harris, Planning and Zoning Services Division Director, Exhibit Number 5. Good morning. Good morning, Chairman. Good morning, members of the board. Um, while it's been a little bit of time coming for us to get to this point with this particular project, um, after some time, we've, um, we're at the point now where we're actually ready to award a bid for the landscaping at here at exit 218. As you may recall, some years back we received federal funding in the form of a grant from, um, or federal grant from Congressman Westmoreland, a federal earmark rather, from Congressman Westmoreland. And we then subsequently, um, Sherry from Planning and Zoning Department, applied for a gateway grant. We received an additional $50,000 for this project. Um, we have bid it out once previously. However, the bid that, one single bid that did come in was well in excess of the budgeted funds that we had available. So we had to go back and rebid the project. Um, did that recently, received two vendors that both came within within our budgeted price. Um, we reviewed that with GDOT, and again, as state and federal funds are involved in this project, they had to review the bids as well. They reviewed the bids, and they are agreeable with um, a recommended low bidder for Rupert Landscaping in the amount of $199,194. And right now, board's requesting authorization to um, award the bid to Rupert to begin the process of getting them in place to do the installation and purchase of materials. I don't think I don't think the average citizen realizes what a um, tedious process it is to work to get approval for something like this. It's been in the works for over two years. It really has. We have to go through the concept phase, and you've heard Terry and Rocky stand up here on previous projects talk about the PDP process, and because there were state project funds involved, we had to go through that same pro process, even though it was a landscape enhancement project, because the federal dollars were involved, we had to go through the PDP process, which involved beginning from the concept stage. So there was an initial concept that was done that did not go in accordance with the PDP process, so we had to kind of go back through, redo our concept, and kind of start from scratch. This required environmental documents to be done, um, historical, archaeological, e e ecology reports to be um, to be generated. So, quite a bit of work involved in trying to get you know a relatively small project, but you know we're excited to finally be at this point. 
Well, I think it'll be, um, it's, it's a good opportunity to take one of our interchanges, do something very attractive with it, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, follow up with the other interchanges along I-75. It makes the community look a whole lot better. We've heard a lot of comments from economic development side and people within the public that, you know, that, that have stressed the importance of wanting to see, you know, more landscape improvements and improvements of this nature within the county. So we're happy to finally be moving in this direction. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? Mr. Holder? At this point, there is no cost to Henry County, is that correct? We did um, allocate costs for, there was a, a percentage match, 20% match from our standpoint, which we utilized on the PE portion. Um, well, I say that we put the funds up front, but we can get reimbursed for the PE. Okay, in, do um, in dollars, what does Henry County have in it? It was $10,000 that we, I think our PE, no, a total of 12, I think it was $12,000 total. And we have, we have not yet been reimbursed for that as of yet. Okay, and Henry County will be responsible for the maintenance. That's correct. And I've had a meeting, and I've met with um, Terry McMickle and Tim Coley with the Parks and Rec and kind of discuss, you know, how maintenance would be handled, who would be handling what as far as the watering and, and the plant bed maintenance and the mowing. And we yeah, kind of worked out kind of who would handle what, what that, duties. If, if a design like this is not maintained, it will look That's worse right. than it does currently if it's not maintained. And also, last question, I believe on this the, the display that's on the screen now, did Pond design this? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Well, if, if I may, it was at, at the time the concept was done, it was ECOS. I just e saw it, Pond's name's on Yeah, this. I think you'll see Pond ECOS. Um, ECOS was acquired by it. Pond. I'm sorry. I got other copies for you. No, I mean, slide that up that's on the screen. And you, it, right at the bottom or top one, it says Pond. You see, it's Pond Ecos. Okay. When it was awarded, it was awarded to the firm, design firm of Ecos. During the time, at the same time we were awarding it, soon thereafter, Ecos was acquired by Pond. So, you know, the firm that we principally worked with was Ecos throughout the entire process, throughout the entire concept process. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Mr. Arletta? There's uh, about $276,000 of grant money here. Is that yes. Correct? And we're using about 200000 of it? That's correct. Right now. Yeah. Right. Is yeah. there plans or can they be used in any other location or is there more to be done at this point? I've got a call in the GDOT and it's a great question. We've had this conversation internally about what we can do with the remaining funds. If we can utilize some of the additional funds for as, as part of this project, I believe they have to remain on this project. We're trying to get an, uh, um, an answer from GDOT as far as what else we can do if we need to move forward with a um, with a change order to add to the project, be that we have funds available. I'm, I'm still trying to nail down an answer from GDOT. Is, project there, manager. <clears throat> is it possible to put a signage out there, welcome to Henry County, or something along those lines? And, and that's exactly what Julie and I had actually discussed um, previously as well, about some kind of um, iconic um, welcome to Henry County sign. We can use that. GDOT gets a little bit skittish on any kind of hardscapes. Um, we've kind of, kind of gone round and round with them over the last couple of years. Um, but there are certain things that they will that, that are allowable. Um, so we've, we've kind of posed the, the, the question. We're still kind of waiting to get back some responses from them. But we did certainly want to move forward with the landscaping. Um, right now their planning season begins October 1st, so we wanted to make sure we continue to push forward with the uh, meeting the, land, the, the planning season for this year and not get into the late spring. Okay. We'll, these, we'll continue to follow up on that. And sure. to the extent we use this remaining $76,000, will we be out an additional match or – I mean, to spend the money, will we have to spend more money or? No, other with the exception of maintenance. Obviously, maintenance would fall okay. but as upon far the as county. The, this, you said before this came with a match, and I just wonder if we met that already. Yeah, and, and I think I misspoke. The, the, the $50,000 gateway grant was strictly to be used on, on material costs. The earmark funds was strictly an earmark, um, ear, earmark um, $226,000 from um, Congressman Westmoreland. Those are strictly just earmark funds for us. We had to pay the money up front, like for the PE design, and then we get reimbursed. So okay. it's reimbursed as opposed to a match. And I, I misspoke okay. in that regard. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So there's no cost to the county for this design and the implementation. No. It will just be the maintenance following afterwards. We, we anticipated when we first started the project, we had to put a number in for PE. And, and subsequently for construction to be associated with the grant, I think we anticipated a number of 10,000, and I think our PE actually came in like 12.5 because we had to do additional environmental. 
and we're still kind of working with them to see if we can have that 12, th that um, additional 2,500 picked up by the grant and not be encumbered by, by the county. So that's the one, the one little caveat we're still trying to work through. Have you had any conversations with the city of McDonough about the possibility of partnering on the maintenance of this interchange since it really is a gateway to McDonough? That's the primary exit, I yeah. think. Uh, other than Jonesboro Road, I know we're going to be talking about that mm -hmm. too. N not specific comments. They were certainly, they, we included them on the, in the process when we were moving through with the concept and deciding on the concepts, but we haven't had any formal conversations regarding the maintenance. I think it's a, I would think Good they would be very, up. very interested in maintaining this, inter helping with the maintenance of this interchange as well. Um, I think we need to reach out to them and and, and have some conversation. And I know, uh, Mr. County Manager, you have lunch with the city managers on a regular basis, and um, it might be a good a good subject to bring up. Yes, ma'am. That's that's been broached before. Um, there will be an item before the board tomorrow night regarding Jonesboro Road. Right. Thank you. Any other questions or comments pertaining to this item? If not, uh, there's a resolution before you to award the bid for the landscape improvements at I-75 and Highway 2081 to Rupert Landscaping, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Auletta. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to finance, we have a resolution requesting approval of agreements for the sale of aviation fuel and the rental of aviation fueling trucks. That's exhibit number six. Mike Bush, finance director, is our presenter. Good morning, Madam Chair, board members. Um, when we acquired the airport from Clayton County, we had to um, go to the state of Georgia and get a sales use license, we had to get a distributor's license and some other permits necessary to uh, operate the the gasoline portion of the airport, the aviation fuel where the airplanes pull up. Um, there's also another area that uh, the current uh, that currently we have two trucks. One has aviation gas, one has jet fuel, which goes out and fuels planes that are uh, you know in a hangar or something instead of them actually pulling to the uh, uh, self serve, I guess if you'll call it that, uh, pumps at the airport. So what this is, is this gives us the ability, this, these three agreements, one is to purchase and distribute the fuel, uh, the second one is to rent the Avgas truck, and the other one is to rent the jet fuel truck. Uh, one of the reasons why we use the uh, Ascent group right now is they are currently there, they have their credit card machines in place. Um, we do not have, currently Henry County does not have a credit card use where you can go and slide credit cards through our banking services. We are in the, you know, we're in the early stages of trying to get that to take place, but there's a whole lot of issues with that. Um, so, the, so this is already in place and it's already being operated today. This is just a, a contract signing with Henry County versus the contract under Clayton County. We have to get it in our name because we're the owner of the airports. So. Is there any change in the cost from moving it from Clayton to Henry? There's no cost in the change, no ma'am. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? Mr. Alana? Um, <clears throat> Mike, are these uh, rental agreements uh, assumption of Clayton's rental agreements or are these new rental agreements? These are new rental agreements. They are the, the cost of the rental trucks is the same that they currently have, but they are in all in Henry County things. They're not, has nothing to do with Clayton County. So if we have new agreements, are we assuming the old equipment, or is it new trucks or new, new uh, it, pieces the, of equipment? It's the trucks that are currently out there. It's not, it's, they did not give us new trucks or anything like that in this agreement. But, you know, if one of these tears up, it's, you know, we will get a new one based on this agreement. Okay. We are responsible or not responsible for maintenance on the equipment? I think on the general day-to-day -day change in the oil, things like that, we are responsible. But a major catastrophe, an engine or something like that going on, I do not believe that we're responsible. In the terms of the agreement? Uh, I believe it's one year. I'm sorry, it is, uh, is it three years. It's uh, This agreement shall become effect on October 1st, 2011, and shall continue in full force and effect for a period of three years and continue thereafter on a month to month lease. Well, <coughs> go back to my original question. The reason I asked if it's new or old equipment with the new lease. If this is three to five year old equipment and we're signing a new lease for three more years, 
for obviously inheriting at a price that's rather expensive for old equipment. I just want to make sure we're getting, I don't know if you've checked to see what they were paying versus what we've agreed to, if it's, it's less than and with exact older same equipment. $400 for one, 450 for the other truck. Okay. Uh, I don't know if there was an opportunity to get at less because the equipment's older, but if they're covering all the heavy maintenance, then we're covered. If it is older equipment, at least we're covered with greater maintenance with older equipment. So I would just make sure that we're not responsible for that maintenance. I have an additional question, I guess, in follow-up to that. And um, I'm not sure that if we enter into some type of agreement with a management company, does this lease transfer to them? Can it be terminated by the county? Is this something that um, someone coming in would want to assume? How, how would that affect? us at that point. I provide that it can be canceled with 90 days written notice on the cancellation. So we will have the opportunity to cancel it and allow the management company to enter into something. Or uh, we can assign it to the management company with the consent of assent uh, according to the agreement. So either of those options will be available. And if you want to, I don't know if we're under a time constraint, but on the issue of the equipment and the age of it, you want to find out and maybe bring this back tomorrow. To yes, we, we, could, we could do that. We could call them today and see if we couldn't. Since this is, if we go to a three-year, you know, we could definitely call them and see if they'll do something with the equipment. I don't see why we can't do that and bring it back tomorrow night. Would someone like to make a motion to table this item until tomorrow night? I'll make the motion to table. I have one other comment then. Okay. okay. Motion to uh, table till tomorrow. All right, and a second by Mr. Sorry. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 4 0. Just one other thing, and that is um, back to your point about a management company assuming this. Um, and as uh, the county attorney mentioned, it is assignable with their consent. Uh, does this agreement also speak to the cost of fuel or the, the price that we are paying within it, or is this just? Because my, I guess my question becomes one of a, a management a company may come in and find they can get better fuel prices by going out and talking to two or three different companies versus the one that's presently out there. Um, and again, leaving that door open for them would be, quite frankly, uh, preferable because uh, of their buying power. They may have some other things or get a cent to... Uh, Provide better pricing. I don't know. We will uh, we will discuss that with the assent today and see if we can't come up with an answer for the tomorrow. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. The next item is under administration: a resolution requesting authorization for the county manager to be signatory on FAA grant request. Our presenter is Butch Sanders, county manager. That's exhibit number seven. Good morning. Good morning, Madam Chair and Board. The uh, the first item on the agenda is very much a housekeeping item whereby the federal government uses a particular grant request form, the SF-424. The FAA falls in line with other agencies in the federal government using this form. Every grant request we will make to the FAA will be on that form until that changes. One of their requirements is that you, as the elected body, uh, designate the county manager as a signatory on this application. And that's what the resolution is for this morning, uh, basically just designating the county manager as a signatory on the SF-424 grant request form. Does any board member have a question or comment pertaining to this item? And one comment. Mr. Stamey. Well, Tom, you've been involved in this, and you, are you involved in crafting this agreement? Um, not to, I think it's pretty standard in form. I have reviewed it. The county manager has um, looked at it as well, so we agree that it's something that we need to do. The only caveat I would add to the resolution to ask the board to consider is that all of the documents that are filed, I know the county manager would do this anyway, but putting the resolution that um, a copy be given to the county clerk's office for record keeping purposes so that we'll always know exactly what's going up um, in the name of the county and we'll have that to respond to future open records requests or whatever, or either any other uh, future requests that may come from the FAA or the Georgia Department of Transportation. We need a central repository for all of those documents to be filed. Absolutely. We need copies of this. Mr. Oletta? The um, 
present acquisition of the airport is under the county or under another agency? Um, initially, um, the thought was that we would acquire it in the name of the Governmental Services Authority, which is an entity, a public entity that was created by the General Assembly um, and has the expanded powers of airport-related activity. Um, on the day of the closing, uh, we got word from the FAA um, concerning um, asking about the extent to which that entity has eminent domain powers in the event that ever became necessary. Um, so we switched everything over to the county at the 11th hour, so the property was actually acquired in the name of Henry County with the proviso that the county could transfer it over to the Governmental Services Authority um, in the future, which is something that we probably will do and bring to y'all for recommendation and approval um, to have that done. Uh, we did not have time to iron out all of those questions that came in at the last minute, so in order to allow us to have a smooth um, transition in the closing, we um, the, the property was acquired in the name of Henry County, um, but the Governmental Services Authority, which is all, which is operated by this board of direct board of commissioners, um, has the authority to engage in airport related op operations. The uh, the reason for the question then is that the county manager, being obviously Henry County's county manager. Um, and may be a part of that governmental services agency with a different title uh, since the title should probably follow the organization that's going to file the grants and thus, you know, to the extent uh, Mr. Sanders is that person, neither organization, that's fine, but I just say the right title should be given to make sure that uh, that authority is or that uh, Yep, authorization is, is in the right place, that's all. That, that's a good question. We'll make sure we take care of those um, loose ends, those pertinent loose ends, when um, you all are asked to transfer it into the name of the authority. <laughs> what I envision is perhaps having some type of contractual agreement between Henry County, Georgia, and the Governmental Services Authority. So the county still will be involved. We just may not be the main um, operator of the airport will be the Governmental Services Authority that will mainly contract and deal with any kind of management companies and other entities at the airport. When the Governmental Services Authority um, um, implemented the Neighborhood Stabilization Program, we did a similar thing by appointing Michael Sabine as a signatory on behalf of, of the board on, on that particular program. So it would be very easy to do the same with Mr. Sanders. Any other questions or comments? Madam Chair, it's probably also good to point out that the Governmental Services Authority is the board. It is the board, yes. Any other questions or comments? If not, you have before your resolution authorizing the county manager to sign the application for federal assistance from SF-424 with the amended language that copies of these forms be filed with the clerk's office for record-keeping purposes. And with that, I'll entertain a motion for approval. Motion by Mr. Holder, second by Mr. Auletta. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Thank you. And the final item is uh, under administration is a resolution requesting approval of a, con uh, of a contract with the Georgia Department of Transportation regarding the acquisition of the airport. That's exhibit number 8. Yes, ma'am. Uh, GDOT is the FAA's conduit for funneling funds to every Georgia airport. And this contract, in the total amount of $1,436,842, um, will be with GDOT. And I'm asking for your approval. This money, combined with a, uh, an $8.6 million um, grant, which we were notified that we had received last Friday from the FAA, uh, will make up our initial $10 million payment to Clayton County as, as scheduled by 930. Um, and I cannot give you an exact date when that will occur, but hopefully later this week. Okay, so the 8.6 from the federal government, we were notified that we received 8.6 million last week, and then the 1.4 from GDOT, you don't have an exact date on when. That's correct. We'll receive that. And the, uh, uh, um, the 1436 is just the amount that is, is coming for the, uh, uh, um, for the incidentals. If you remember, there was an, an outstanding amount 
which uh, uh, was owed to Clayton County, and uh, that uh, that has been approved. We will hold that until um, all of the specifics of, of the deal is, uh, uh, is confirmed. Does any board member have a question or comment? If not, you have before you a resolution requesting approval. Um, Mr. Arlette, I'm sorry. There's a couple different figures in this agreement, uh, uh, Mr. Sanders. The um, $1,473,684, and then there's a 36842 Correct. Um, could you explain the, the difference between a million four and those figures, please? Sure. The uh, uh, the million four seventy three is the total amount of the package. That includes our local share, which our match, our local share was taken care of when we uh, uh, came up with the one point two nine six million for the purchase of the airport, um, and the 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 federal amount of one point four million. The state puts in two and a half percent of that. Which is the uh, uh, other 36,842 there? The total amount of this grant, if approved, will be the uh, uh, um, the one one four plus the 36, which comes up to the one four three six eight four two number. Okay, but there's a one four seven three up above page two. That, correct. That is, that is the total amount, but that includes our share, which has already been paid in our purchase price. The total amount of this grant, which you will be accepting, is the 1.436642. 842, excuse me. I, just, I guess my concern is that these funds, if they're for future payments we're obligated for, aren't commingled now. Uh, they're set aside for the remaining payment. If Because it appears some of this, I'm not just quickly looking at it here, that Maybe some of this is related to some of the future items we've agreed to pay Clayton in this purchase agreement. So I just want to make sure that if that's the case, these other funds that you're talking about are not earmarked, if you would, for that. They are really the, the two grant requests that we put in um, totaled up to the $10 million plus the 85 or I, I think it's 89, 89.8, um, which uh, uh, will go to uh, Clayton County. And we wanted to make sure that we had, since we had agreed to that at the, uh, uh, at the in the closing, we wanted to make sure that was included in, in these numbers. And that's right. For um, purposes of um, explaining to members of the public, Clayton County had some uh, unreceived or unrecouped grant benefits that it was due that had been approved, but because they were the date of the closing would not allow them to obtain those funds. So as part of the closing arrangement, Henry County agreed to be um, somewhat of a con conduit only to receive those funds that had already been approved, and we are obligated then to turn that $85,000 over to Clayton County um, between now and the 30th once we receive them. But if the monies don't come in from FAA, the county has no obligation or liability whatsoever. We're just merely a conduit because we are now the airport sponsor and we agreed to do that just as a good faith gesture to assist Clayton County in recouping some expenses that have already been approved by the FAA. Mr. Oletta. The acquisition of the uh, hangar um, the last payment, and I believe September 13, yes. is when I believe the hangar becomes, that's the last payment. Or is that hangar, I know we went back and forth, back and forth. I'm trying to recall if the September, hangar September. is part of this payment now. It is part of this one now. Okay, originally it was at the end and went back and forth. Yes, because sir. this is all about the hangar, and if that was the last payment, that's what I was getting at when you see the calculations for the okay. 36000 and Mr. Letter, this this grant itself, this GDOT contract, is for approximately ten and a half acres of the property plus the hangar. Yeah, and I saw the well, the, the, the other one was for the for the money that we did receive. I saw it was for, I believe, eight or ninety rather, and the total we were getting at a hundred thousand was a hundred acres. So that would be the missing ten I was looking for. Correct. Um, so that makes sense. Okay. 
No? Any other questions? And if not, you have before your resolution a requesting approval of a contract with the Georgia Department of Transportation regarding federal funds for the tear field acquisition, and I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve by Mr. Auletta, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. I was hoping you were not going to turn down $1.4 million, so thank you for that motion. <laughs> Moving on to board appointments, exhibit uh, number 10. The first one that we have is to the Board of Health, and uh, Mr. James Spinaski, who served as an appointee, made the decision to no longer serve on the board, and Mr. Lauren Pierce has indicated his desire to fill that position, and many of you may be uh, familiar with Mr. Pierce. He is uh, the senior shareholder of Moist Pharmacy Incorporated, and uh, there was a copy of his bi uh, professional biography attached to that request and if there are uh, no issues with Mr. Um, Pierce, I'd like to entertain a motion for his appointment to the Board of Health. Motion by Mr. Holder, second, second. by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Next is the District 3 Council on Aging and um, I believe Mr. Stamey, this is uh, something that you're bringing before the board? Yes, I'd like to reappoint the uh, three presently serving, Ms. Jamie McGarity, Charlie Thomason, and Judy Gilbert. All right. We have a motion to reappoint these three individuals, and I'll um, look for a second on that. Second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. At this time, I need approval of the August 2nd regular minutes. Are there any additions to be made to those? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion by Mr. Um, Holder, second by Mr. Stamey. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Did anyone sign up for public comment? Mr. County Manager, anything for public session? No, ma'am. Ms. County Attorney? No, ma'am. Upcoming meetings tomorrow, September 20th at 6.30 p.m. We have a regular meeting. Monday, October 3rd at 9 a.m. We have a workshop meeting. And Tuesday, October 4th at 9 a.m., a regular meeting. At this time, I need a motion to convene into executive session for the purposes of potential pending litigation, land acquisition, and, and personnel matters. So motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. I need a motion to reconvene into public session. So moved. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. At this time, I need a motion for approval of an affidavit and resolution pertaining to executive session. So moved. Motion by Mr. Stamey, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. At this time, Mr. Holder needs to make a motion to amend the agenda. Madam Chair, I need to amend the agenda for two items out of the uh, public necessity. First one is a motion to amend a previous agreement entered into with L&C Partnership to reflect the donated land purchase price of $979,000, uh, $979, which is a $70,000 uh, difference in what it was before, 70000 even. Uh, it was based on the fact that there was... Um, The, the appraisal showed $70,000 uh, more than what the original agreement that this Board of Commissioners had agreed upon. Uh, and it was due to the fact of, of damage to a particular parcel of the guys, of the LNC's property. And we have all donated land. And all of this is donated land. This exactly. is no, no money that the county is spending no. today. This is in regards to donated property no, to the board. No, this, this is just to, for paperwork. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to amend the agenda and approve the 979000 um, by Mr. Holder. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Auletta. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. Madam Chair, in the next one, we have a resolution to amend the Association of County Commissioner of Georgia's defined benefit plan for Henry County employee, uh, employees and to adopt agreement amendment number three for the defined, uh, for the association ACCG defined benefit plan for Henry County employees. 
Okay, we have a motion on the floor by Mr. Holder. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Staney. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. If there's no further business to come before the board, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Mr. Arletta, second by Mr. Holmes. All in favor? Motion carries 4-0. We stand adjourned. <laughs>